Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on Dark Sack. I am Dark, and today we're going to be taking a look at the room Printer Hacking 101 on Try Hack Me. This is a really, really cool room. Even though it doesn't go as necessarily in depth, it gives you a nice introduction to printer hacking. And if you are a penetration tester or someone that's looking to learn a new and unique skill, this is the room for you. It's really cool. Uh, as someone that's gone through and evaluated printers on enterprise levels before, this is something that a lot of people don't think about. And a lot of people don't realize just how vulnerable they can be, what they store on them, so on and so forth. It's just something that once you know about it, you really, it, you forever have it in the back of your mind that, hey, I need to secure this printer. That being said, let's go ahead and jump into task one, unit one, introduction. In this room, we will look at the most common printer hacking techniques, and we will look at why they're made vulnerable. Mass printer hacking has been taking advantage of, uh, a lot of people have been taking advantage of this over the past few years. One example would be when one attacker hacked around fi uh, 50,000 printers, printing out messages asking people to subscribe to PewDiePie. Uh, that was actually, I believe his handle is Hacker Giraffe. It's a really interesting case, and I believe he was actually on Darknet Diaries to talk about that. Um, really interesting guy. He ended up doing it, I believe, to raise awareness and also have people subscribe to PewDiePie uh, as there was an ongoing sub war on YouTube. Very interesting uh, story with all that. And I definitely recommend that if you have the time and want to watch or listen to a great episode of Darknet Diaries, I definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, in the next task, we'll take a look at the reasons behind the success of this attack. Uh, so here we can see we have a picture of one of those printouts. Uh, PewDiePie is in trouble and he needs your help to defeat T-Series. Uh, this is an example of one of those printouts that would have come from the printers that were vulnerable and were attacked uh, via the scripting that he ended up doing. And again, we can see a sample printout from the PewDiePie printer hacking incident. Let's go ahead and mark this as completed and jump into task 2, unit 2, the IPP port. The reason behind the printer's vulnerability, which affected those 50,000 printers, was simply an open IPP port. The Internet Printing Protocol, IPP, is a specialized internet protocol for communication between client devices and printers. This allows clients to submit one or more printing jobs to the server or print server, or to the printer or print server, rather, and perform tasks such as querying the status of a printer, obtaining the status of a print jobs, or canceling individual print jobs, so normal things that you would do with a printer. When an IPP port is open to the internet, it is possible for anyone to print to the printer or even transfer malicious data through it, using it as a middleman for attacks. Uh, this is because printers are essentially small Linux computers. Uh, they're not very powerful. If you have a Raspberry Pi, especially a new one, it is more powerful than your printer, uh, which probably doesn't surprise you. But still, it's a small Linux computer. It's, it's vulnerable. Uh, you know, it's still another computer in the household that needs to be updated or another computer that's in your business that you have to take care of. A recent study by Variate, uh, Vulnerability and Attack Repository for IoT, showed that there are still around 80,000 vulnerable printers opened up to the world. That's even more than the vulnerable printers that were attacked beforehand. Most of them appear to run the CUPS server, which is the simple Unix printing system. Uh, if you've ever done an installation of Ubuntu or another Debian system, this will actually pop up in the uh, introduction bits. It'll ask you, do you want to install a cop server? That's what it, this is all for. And here we can see that uh, this is a heat map of where those vulnerable printers are. Uh, similar to uh, any pandemic game, I guess Greenland only has one is trying to avoid being vulnerable. But uh, you can see that United States has a whole bunch of them. And otherwise, they're just all spread out. Uh, which makes sense because, I mean, printers are a pretty ubiquitous technology device. An open IPP port can expose a lot of sensitive information, such as a printer name, location, model, firm, or firmware version, or even the printer Wi-Fi SSID. So getting details about the Wi-Fi that it's attached to. What port does IPP run on? So if we go through and Google this, we can find that it runs on port 631. We're going to type that in. And then we can go ahead and move on to task three, which is going to be unit three, targeting and exploitation. So in this case, uh, I do recommend deploying the box right here and now. I've gone ahead and already done that because I've done this next to a little bit that we're going to do. Uh, locating and exploiting local print servers, or printers, rather. 
Uh, so this is a GitHub repository for Pret. This is the printer exploitation toolkit. We'll be using that in this task. It's very cool, very easy to use. It may be a little bit overwhelming to get started with printers, but they, again, they're simply, they're just Linux computers. So getting started with this is very easy. Uh, you can install it by running the following commands, and I'm going to go and copy this over. I'm using, for the sake of consistency, the Try Hack Me browser machine, and for whatever reason, I had my local machine has decided it doesn't want to connect to the VPN for a moment. Um, but I've got uh, this on uh, up, and I'm just using the browser machine because, again, it's consistent. But we can go and install all that. Very easy. This does run on Python, too. It's a little bit older. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about this, there is a talk that the creator did. I believe this was created as part of a research project. Um, and uh, its creator, uh, he did a talk on printer hacking and simply talking about a lot of the lack of research that had been done before. Uh, very interesting. If you search printer hacking talk, you'll be able to find it on YouTube. It's very easy to find, but very cool. But here we can see, very simple to install. We have Pret all ready to go, just two commands to uh, clone it from GitHub and then actually set up the prerequisites using Python 2. Locating printers. Simply running Python, so this is Python 2, and then Pret.py, which we saw in this directory, will start an automatic printer discovery in your local network. It is also possible by running an MMAP scan on your whole network to find these, but unfortunately it will take a lot longer of a time. This is because pret.py, uh, that scan is focused on the ports which printer communication is on by default, thus making it immensely faster. It's the same as running a, a map scan on one port. It's much, much faster. And here we can see some sample output or output from running that, uh, where this is run on a local network. If you run this on your local home network or business network, this is pretty similar to what you're going to find, unless someone's already gone through and actively secured the printers in question. So exploiting, uh, now it's time to finally exploit the printer. Uh, there are exactly three options you need to try. So these are the three languages that printers can communicate on when exploiting a printer using Pret. Uh, the first one is PostScript. I believe this is the newest one. The second one is printer job language, PJL, and then printer command language, which is PCL. You need to try out all three languages just to see which one is going to be understood by the printer. Uh, and this is something to know. I do recommend trying this next bit on your home printer if you own it. If you do not own it, we don't hack things that we don't own, so don't do that. Uh, but you can go through and see how the process works. So sample usage, it is pythonpret.py, uh, and then the IP of the actual printer or the host name, or if it's connected locally, and then you need the actual language. So again, this second parameter here, or the uh, first parameter after pret.py, is the how you're accessing it and then the last parameter you notice even though this is changing uh, you can have these interchangeable it just needs to be one of these three options that's how you're communicating with it after running this command you're supposed to get a shell like output with uh, where you can run different commands you can run help to see all these commands and this is actually the output from running help there so here you can see again ps uh, the uh, PostScript language there being the newest one, it supports many, many more commands. Uh, and this is where we start seeing where printers might be more vulnerable and what their actual vulnerabilities would be. So here we can see that we are going through and we can run a bunch of basic Linux commands on the printer, fairly straightforward. However, where this becomes very problematic is when we start considering Printers have to save the documents that they are printing somewhere. Those are saved locally on the printer. If you can get read access to those, you can start getting read access to sensitive documents such as, I don't know, HR data, or maybe sensitive project information. You know, things that, it depends on the department that has the printer, where the printer's located, but most of the time if you're printing something, it probably has something interesting on it if you're taking the time to print it. Unless you're like me and you're into coloring books and then you do you and you're printing something that, look, if I was an attacker and I found that, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I can get behind this. And I'd probably take your coloring book, too, just because, you know what, I'm there. I already worked for it. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, no, you can see how you can get this inf interesting information off of a printer there. Um, one quick note in this. Uh, this is uh, actually something that even if you do not have a printer at home or if you are with like a hacking club or a cyber defense club or a local hacking group, uh, this is an excellent opportunity for an activity. 
Uh, you can go and buy an old printer. You can get something that it doesn't even have to print. Ideally, it turns on still because that's kind of a prerequisite for doing this. But you can get an old printer that uh, you can go and pen test it and make a mini CTF out of it and tell people you need to figure out how to hack this printer. Don't tell them about Pret or do tell them about Pret. Uh, but there's an opportunity here and you can get an old printer for very cheap. So again, you can try uh, Pret on your printer at home just to test its security. This is a nice cheat sheet for things that you can do with printers. I have this open in this tab and we're gonna be taking a look at it here in just a moment. So uh, practice, a uh, bad example of IPP configuration. Uh, so the author of this room, Swafox, has a poorly configured cup server uh, attached to the VM in this task. So we can deploy it and access it on port uh, 10, 10, 37, uh, 243, and then port 631. Very, we would expect this because, again, that's the printer uh, cups port, rather. Uh, see if you can retrieve any sensitive information. So Pret isn't actually going to work in this instance. Uh, that is... One thing to be aware, Pret, you'll have to practice on your own printer uh, because it's a little bit tricky to simulate with a VM, but you can go through and play with it on your own time with that. However, we are still going to look at an attached printer with a CUPS server here to see what we or what we can pick at. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, it looks like uh, you can get SSH access to this machine, and I'll walk through how to get this password here. Uh, there is an SSH password uh, that's set for this printer account. It is very weak. You can get this password using Hydra and walk you, rock you very quickly. Um, I'll walk through that in a moment, and we're going to do that when we get down to steps three and four. Uh, let's go ahead, and we'll jump into task or question one here, which is going to be how would a simple printer TCP denial of service attack look as a one-line command? If we jump up to our cheat sheet here, we can actually see what that looks like, where we have our denial of service up here with just a simple TCP uh, denial of service attack that uh, could be done. And if we go ahead and take that back, we can paste that in and we can see that that is the correct answer. So review the cheat sheet provided in the task reading above. What pr attack are printers often vulnerable to that involves sending more and more information until a pre-allocated buffer size is surpassed? If you're familiar with this terminology, you'll know to right away that this is a buffer overflow attack. If we take a look at this, we can see uh, it should hint to it here. Yep, buffer overflow. So we can see that this is an example of how we can do a flood to go through and perform that overflow attack. But even then, you can see there are lots and lots of different bad things that we can do to printers. Uh, for example, physical damage. Don't do this. Unless you own the printer, do not <laughs> do this. Uh, but you can see how this gets dangerous very quickly. And even then, from the document standpoint, it's if you damage a very expensive printer, I, I mean, if it's a corporate printer, that's probably t you know several thousand dollars, not to mention maintenance costs or whatever uh, was attached to it. it, it that's problematic. Uh, connect to the printer per the instructions above. Where's the Fox underscore printer located? So we're going to go ahead and jump over to the VM. And the first thing that we'll do is I will hop over to Hydra here. And here we can see that I've run this command, Hydra, uh, login printer, and then use the word list rock you against SSH on the IP of my target box, uh, the VM attached to this. And we can see that we found the login and password of printer and then password one, two, three. With this, we can jump back over and grab this SSH command to get local access to the printer web control with a cup server. And we can see that I did that just here and I'll scroll up for you guys to see that. And here we can see, yeah, we were just able to log in and that gives us local access to the website on the port 3,631. Now, once we've done that, we can go back and see that if we navigate to that, and I'll grab just this base bit for a moment. If we navigate to that, we can see that we have access to the cup server. Uh, we have a version here, but we have administration and we have the printers listed. Diving into the printers as the task instructed, we can start getting some interesting information. So first we can see we have, it looks like a Fox underscore printer and it prints PDFs and flags. That's wonderful. 
Uh, and then we were looking for the location, and it looks like it's in Skitty's basement. So we're going to get access to Skitty's printer. And we can put that for the answer. And then we need to find the size of a test sheet. We can get that by actually jumping in to the printer information here, which is the same as that tab. And we can see that we have some maintenance tasks that we can do. And one of them, let's see, it might be under administration. Print test page, there we go, under maintenance. So we can do that. And if we click back in, we can see that we have a task page print that's currently processing uh, with a size of 1,000, uh, 1K. So we were able to get the size. And if we jump back over to the room, we can put that for question four. And we can see how just by getting access to that printer control panel, we can start getting sensitive information such as the location, which is going to give us potentially what information is going to be on it or what we can expect. Uh, the test sheet isn't as important, but it shows you how you can start getting nitty gritty things and start printing random things and start scaring people and making them wonder what the heck their printer is doing. But either way, let's go ahead and jump into the fourth and final task, Unit 4 Conclusion. Turns out printer hacking isn't that hard at all. The problem here arises from low awareness of these issues and multiple misconfigurations made by administrators and users. By default, most modern printers come vulnerable. This is something that if you get a home printer and you are worried about the security of your home network, it is worthwhile to go through and scan it. It is absolutely worthwhile to go through and scan it as long as you own it. Um, again, make sure that you own it because whenever you're doing anything to a device, uh, it is possible that it won't respond well to scans. It might have other issues, so just be aware of that. Uh, a small research project of mine suggested that it is possible to get almost full fo uh, server file access by simply exploiting the printer service running on it. A shock from this discovery motivated me to create this room and bring more attention to this. And Swalfox did a great job creating this room. This is something that not a lot of people realize that you can hack printers like this, and it's actually not that hard, as printers aren't that complicated. Uh, they're complicated to fix from a physical level. From a hacking level, not so much. So now make sure you secure your printer by making it invisible for, uh, from the outer internet and reconfiguring administrator access. Uh, so the last two things that you can do is go through check to make sure that your printer isn't vulnerable and then go learn more t uh, through further research and experimentation. Congrats on completing this room. Perfect. And that is going to do it for me today. If you have any questions, as always, I have the DarkSec and official Try and Hack Me Discords linked below. If you enjoy content like this, please subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter, and I will see you guys next time.